everything. Be God. One last time. Sing with all your heart. place. You may have your seats in the house of the Lord. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. No matter what we face and what we go through, no matter what obstacles we're going to run through, we can be certain that he first loves us. And because he loves us, we know that we can make it through anything. He says, in this world you will have trouble. But be of good courage, for I have overcome the world. In other words, I have the key to overcome everything that you're facing. And if you just have good courage and stay with me, not leave, not be afraid, not run, but walk with me, I will overcome, with, overcome the world with you. I have what it takes to do it. So right now, let's give God a great hand clap of praise for who he is in our life. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on. Oh. Oh. Yes, yes. That's why I love them. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You may have your seats. Today we are continuing our series. I want to uh, share with you that uh, the last time that we were together, we talked about uh, the, the kingdom of God, and we are in that series, Kingdom Matters, and we were talking about the will of the Father. This will be our last installment of that, but I hate to say that uh, uh, on last weekend, on Sunday morning, we changed things up a little bit, and some of you did not get the benefit of the teaching that we did on Sunday. And we talked about the role of the bishop, Rick, and what it matters. How many were in that service when you... Okay. So if you have not heard that, you need to hear it because it will answer so many questions. I've, I've gotten so many questions whether uh, becoming a bishop, Rick, is a personal thing, is it a, is it a, a, a cultural thing, is it a black thing, is it a white thing, is it a, is it a Catholic thing? And, and you need to understand that Frontier Church was founded on a biblical thing. Hello, somebody. And so as you may remember, we started with our deacons. We ordained them in a ceremony, and we did it also with our elders in a ceremony. So think it not strange that your pastor would be uh, consecrated in a ceremony, for we've, we've already done it two times already. So it's not an odd thing. We are just getting ready for what God is doing in our church, and it is not a strange thing. But if you missed it, we put together a small group uh, curriculum um, that should be, in the, uh, should be available at the back of the church. Um, and, and if not, you can definitely get that uh, from one of our leaders. Um, they'll get you a copy of that. So you can actually study for yourself. Uh, it is very important that you understand God's will. Many times we are brought up in church, and we are not brought up in a biblical perspective. And so when what we see church is, what we understand the church to do is not like what we read. And how many have come here to this church and seen things like you've never seen them before? <laughs> I mean, hey, it's, it's the way we roll, baby. You know, if it's in the word, we roll with it. And uh, uh, the good news is that the presence of the Lord has been with us. The good news is that I've had testimony of testimony of people say, I've I've seen outpours on the spirit of the spirit, but I've never seen it consistently in a church like I've seen it like it's normal. And that is our desire that we walk in normality of our supernaturalness. Amen, somebody. That we walk in our supernaturalness in such a way that it doesn't become abnormal. We don't all have to be famous and on TBN or identified as a saint in the Catholic Church in order to do miracle signs and wonders. Hello, somebody. But it is supposed to be within the body of Christ. It is all of ours. And, and as leaders in this church, we want to make it so simple 
that we all walk in that power, that we're not overwhelmed by the work of the enemy, but we win people to Jesus through the simplicity of the power of his Holy Spirit. And all of you are volunteers in that battle. All of you have signed up for that war. So studying your word is a, necess is a necessity to be able to become the person that God called you to be. Can I see a hand of all the soldiers in the house Amen. tonight? Amen. Yeah. Praise the Look around, look around. Make sure you know who your soldiers are. Because if they go through something, you got to get them out. Hello. No man left behind. Hello, somebody. Okay. So let's go back to the word. I'm not going to reiterate from uh, Sunday's message because I want you to, if you would like to look at it, you can go online. It is online now at FrontierChurch.com. And you can actually take a look at it and watch the entire thing. And I think it would be a blessing to you and your family and even to those around you that may be questioning what we're doing. Uh, but I want to start and continue. You guys have been right smack dab in the middle of God's word, and I want to continue that. We're going to go and continue with God's will. I want you to go to John chapter 6, verse 38. We want to begin there. John 6, verse 38. And this is critical because we just finished singing this song, uh, Because He First Loved Me. And the reality here is that uh, w when we're talking about the role that God plays in the universe is he is the impetus, he's the, the idea, he's the reason things exist. It is out of his will that things are done. And, and the person that manifests it in the natural so that we may see it is his son. And the one that empowers it so that we may do it is his spirit. And so when you understand that God wills it, Jesus builds it, and the Holy Spirit fills it, then you begin to understand the way that the God, the Father, and the Trinity operate within the body of the Christ. So we're going to go back to something Jesus did and, and said that would make it sense for you. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 38 uh, begins a story of Jesus speaking to the people after he had done a great miracle. It was the multiplication of the bread and the loaves, and everybody was astounded at the miracle. They were stunned, and they were literally about to take him and make him king. Someone said king. king. They wanted an Israelite king so bad that they were willing to snatch the man up, whether he wanted to be it or not, and make him king. Hallelujah. It's all right to honor somebody. Amen. How many know that? And what happened in that moment, Jesus knew, I'm not the king of this earth. That's not my purpose. I didn't come here to rule over natural things. I came here to rule over spiritual things. My kingdom is not of this earth. My kingdom birthed this earth. I'm not just here. I'm not just in politics. I'm above politics. I am of the maker of the heaven and earth. I made it all. I don't want a piece of what I made. I want all that I made. Hello, somebody. And so they began to say, when he said, I am the bread of life, they said, what do you mean you're the bread of life that came out of heaven? I don't, I don't understand why you don't want this thing. And he began to transfer his will away. And I want you to see this. John 38 says, for I came down from heaven and do not my what? Own will, but the will of him. Hallelujah. So now, again, we go back to uh, gender, we see God as a male. He says, I'm not here to do my will, but I do the will of him that sent me. Here's the ultimate, the ultimate expression of your walk in the Father is to do the will of him that sent you. To do why you're here. So often we have been trained, we have been indoctrinated that the way to be happy is to have a family, 2.5 kids, don't know where the .5 comes from, and then we have all a nice car, we have a nice home, we were settled, and if, if, if the villages were the byproduct of having everything you want, God help us all. Y'all missed that. Because I know what goes on in the villages. 
unsettled, so un unhappy. There are so many souls. I'm praying God to raise up a person that can go straight into villages and just minister there and, and reach them. But there are so many people that have everything they ever wanted, and yet they're internally empty, and they have to do the worst things to try to fill a gap because they don't know what the will of the Father is for their life. It ain't just the villages. We got it all, all around the world. It just happens the old, young, even the rich around the world act foolish when they don't know that there is a God that has a plan for their life. Hello, somebody. I am just glad that I came across the will of God concerning Steve Yates, that I can do what he told me to do, and I can sleep at night. Hello, somebody. God has a will. He had a will for me. He has a will for Jesus, and he has a will for you. Look at verse 39. God wills, uh, and if you want to write something down, write this down. God wills our salvation. He desires our salvation. It is his will that puts it in motion. You ever wonder why? You went through things that you went through and got out of it. You wonder why you should have been dead and buried, but God kept you alive. You wonder why you almost married this person, but you thank God you married this person and God moved you in the right direction. You wonder why that God put you in this job versus that job. And although you wanted that job, he still moved you into this job because he knew over there was hellions and over here a bunch of heavenly people that would teach you about him and you come to know him. God's plans concerning your life are even bigger than what you know. Hello, somebody. Sometimes you, you want to know it all. You want to know the ingredients to make your life taste tasty. But sometimes God will surprise you with a souffle. He'll make one of them shepherd pies of your life. You just got leftover from piece of here, a piece here, and you eat it. You go, hmm, this is good. But he took all the broken parts of your life, put it in a shepherd's pie of Christ. And now you're like, this is the best thing. Come on, somebody. You don't need to know everything in order to do God's will. You just have to be open. God, whatever you want, I'm willing. Hello, somebody. This is verse 39, and it says, And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. That's saying something. Because the, many of us, will try to get out of God's will. But the will of the Father, the one who willed you into existence, doesn't desire you to be lost. And it says, but should raise it up again at the last day. Turn to the next verse, verse 41. And this is the will of him that sent me. Wow, another one. That everyone which seeth the Son, believeth on him, may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up at the last day. There's two examples of the will. Verse 41. Then, everyone say then. The, the Jews then murmured at him. Because he says, I am the bread that came down from heaven. Why complain now? He didn't, what did he say that would produce complaint? Look at verse 42. And they said, is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I came down from heaven? <laughs> Can we stop right there for a second? <laughs> Sometimes you can know too much about a person. And know too little about what God knows about that person. You go, well, I remember when we did this together. So I know he can't be all that. Because, I, I mean, I, I done assessed his life. And he can't be any more than this. But God saw a whole lot more than that. He saw that he had all of this plan for his life. And yet we look at a person and say, you know what? This is the best they can be. And they couldn't see past his mama and his father. They couldn't see that he was born from heaven. How many know you don't come from this earth? You come from heaven. Hello, somebody. 
You were born out of heavens. You came out of God's mind. And then you were put with a parent. Then you were birthed in the earth. You can't get stuck looking at people where, they may, where they've been and the mistakes they've made and hold them accountable to that. No, sir. If they come to Christ, if they come to God, they are a new creature. All things passed away and all things, be that is the will of the Father. You can't say what a man can't be. You can't tell a man what he is not in God. You can't say you haven't done enough in God to have all of that. If God put it on their life, you just say, praise the Lord, we got another one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have to get to a point where we look beyond the flesh of people. We look beyond what is comfortable for us. This boy over here ain't nothing but a carpenter. All he knows is how to do wood. He don't know how to do nothing else. How he going to be the bread of heaven? I didn't see him come out of heaven. I didn't smell no bread when he was born. What's wrong with this man? <laughs> Go to verse 43. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, sometimes you got to answer the murmurings. Hallelujah. Sometimes you can't let people get away with just murmuring. If they don't know no better, tell them. Give them a choice. Tell them the truth, then let them decide. But then move on. It ain't your job to convince anybody. But if they don't know no better, Help them. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not. Stop all that talking. Look at your neighbor and say, stop all that talking. <laughs> I like that. Turn the other side and say, you too. You, some of y'all still looking at me. No, don't look at me. Y'all scared. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop all that talking. Turn the other side and say, you too. Amen. Hallelujah. Stop all that talking. How many things in your life you don't understand now and you trying to understand everything else? Come on now. There are spiritual things that take place that aren't natural in your sight. And if God says it, let it be God and let it stay with God instead of you trying to bring it down to man so you can understand it. If God is moving in our church, shout and praise God Almighty. Man, when we... <laughs> When God's spirit was moving on church, you know, I had people mad at me. They were going, man, this is enough is enough. Another Sunday where the Holy Ghost is moving to the point we can't have worship? What is this? Something's wrong. We, I want to hear me a sermon. I want 2.5 minutes of worship, and I want 45 minutes of sermon. And God was healing people on the altar I mean, casting out demons, li li opening up healing, eyes open up, hearts being healed, tumors being taken away. And they're like, I don't want it. I want my sermon so I can go home and get something to eat and go to sleep. Because that's what I'm used to. Oh, my God. We've been praying for a breakthrough, a revival. Everybody, revival. It's da-da-da-da-da. Come on now. Revival. And the revival goes, revival, revival here. Uh, can you come back next week? I'm listening to TBN right now. Listen, he will show up, and it ain't based on your feelings. If God shows up, hush your mouth. Come on, stay silent before the Lord. Let him do what he got to do. You may not believe it. You may look and say, man, it's all fake. You don't know that. What, what if you just said, God, if this is real, do it to me. That's what I used to say. I used to see crazy stuff. I see people drop, stop, drop, and roll all over the carpet. And I'm like, what, they on fire? Yes, they were on fire. I didn't know any better. I'm like, man, they all fake. They trying to get me to join this church. That's all they doing. This ain't real. And then I came down one day. And I said, if it's real... Let it happen to me. And man, I think I cleaned that entire church with my clothes. I mopped that way, mopped that way. 
I was up on the wall mopping the wall. <laughs> I was so ashamed. I'm like, don't, don't, don't do that to me again. Don't, don't do that again. Don't, don't do that. Murmur, <laughs> murmur not among yourselves. Do you see the problem here? In order to be in the will of God, you can't murmur among yourselves. You got to go to those who have the answers. Come on, somebody. If you don't understand something, don't take it to the parking lot. Don't take it to your neighbor. Don't call your mama. Don't call your sister-in-law. Don't call your friend who's going to tell you what they want, what you want to hear. No, go to the people you got an issue with and let them resolve it. Look at verse 43, 44. Now, this is critical to the will of the Father. No man can come unto me except what? Which has sent me does what? It's the concept drawing, meaning it ain't just instant. He's fishing. God is fishing right now. And people don't come to Christ on accident. You don't stumble into Jesus. Oh, what is this? Oh, I'm in heaven right now? Oh, God. Wrong door, sorry. Uh-uh. He draws every single person. That means your life has a purpose. That means God brought you here for a reason. He draws you with his, as, the, as Romans 2 says, his loving kindness and pulls you into him. Now watch this. It goes on to say, except the Father which hath sent me, who has the power to raise up on the last day, who has the power to keep you once you get caught, unless the Father draw him, he says, listen, and here's what I'll do. I will raise him up at the last day. So the reality here is that the will of the Father is all about salvation as well. You can't be saved unless God had you on his mind. That's not number one. That's very important, number one. Now, now uh, I want you to go to verse 45. That'll be the last one here when it comes to salvation. The will of God draws us to salvation. Now, 45. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be what? Taught of who? Taught of who? All right. So there are people who will teach you only about the Old Testament and tell you you need to go back under the law. No, sir. There are people teach you, tell you to only read the New Testament. You, the Old Testament is old. No, no, sir. It is the whole, the whole counsel of God you should be taught by. And it says you would be taught of God. God is using people to teach people. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and have learned of the Father cometh to me. In other words, every teaching that really comes from God will point you to Jesus. <laughs> See, a lot of people don't get that. Anybody that's really heard from God will end up finding Jesus. Nobody else. Because that's what? The will of the Father. Now, let's continue. If the idea is that it is God's pattern that his will sets the pattern for everything we've ever seen on this earth and everything that is, is to be was first made and patterned in heaven, God had it first in his will, then we should be able to see that pattern throughout all of history. First of all, in humans. Write down the word humans. Humans. We ought to see the pattern of God's will in humans before we were even made. We should see that. Where does humanity get its form from? We talked a little bit about this last time we were together. Uh, what does God look like? Is he a spirit? Is he a ghost? Is he just woo? Is he one of them Scooby-Doo things? What is he? What is he? What does he look like? Well, I, we talked last week that he had five. Mm, you do it every time. <laughs> Ten fingers. And how many toes? Ten toes. H how do we know that? Well, here's what I want you to go. First of all, go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We're going to find something very unique. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. <clears throat> and it says, uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I think we have an issue with the, the mic, the, the way it looks here. Okay. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, meaning you to look like him. And to, you have his substance. And let them have what? Dominion over what? Let's read. The fish of the sea, the fowls of the air, over the cattle, 
and over all what? So if you are addicted to a drug, you have lost your dominion. Why did you get so quiet? Why? Because you're supposed to be have dominion over all the earth. So if you if you caught up under the cocoa plant, if he walked in the garden, you up under cocoa plant, something's wrong. You go marijuana, it's okay, but you can't let it go. You up under the marijuana plant. There's nothing wrong. Now, now mark this, please. There's nothing wrong with the marijuana plant. Do I advocate marijuana? No, it's a plan. But just like the enemy, he uses things God makes for the wrong reasons. That cocoa plant wasn't made for what we're using it for. That, 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 that marijuana plant wasn't made for what we're using it for. And when you pervert God's will concerning something, that's why we have prostitutes. That woman wasn't made for that. It's been perverted. Gigolos and... You know, those things, praise the Lord. <laughs> Don't want to get too deep. You got the point. Okay. He said, let us make man in our image. And I love what it says. It says, after our likeness and have the, the, or dominion over, let's read, fish of the sea, fowls of the air, and over the cattle, and over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27. Watch this. So God created man in his own image, and image, the God, image of God created he him, and what? Male and female created he them. So what is very important to understand is that God made you in his image. This, you are the epitome of what his image looks like, his likeness looks like. We, we look like God, and we keep looking to the stars trying to find a better image, thinking there's something out there better than us, and we won't accept the truth that we are the best that he ever made, and therefore we should rise to who we are. Hello, somebody. We have spent billions, and I mean, we have, we have wasted billions and billions and billions sending metal with cameras into the stars for nothing just to prove again and again we are the most incredible creation ever made. Save your money. Feed the poor. If that's what you're going for, just save it. You are God's best creation. Now look at this. Uh, uh, verse 27 talks about it, and then 28, let's look at that. And God blessed them and said unto them, do what? And do what? The whole purpose of humanity was to increase in the earth. Let me answer a question. People say to me all the time, well, I don't understand because something's not right. What is the difference between Genesis 1, which tells God made man, and then here comes another story in Genesis 2, which talks about God making man again. Are there two groups? That's where you get a lot of heresy caught up between the two chapters. No, what God did was he did an overview of what he did in chapter 1, and then he turns the scope and he zooms in to how everything played out to give you another overview but with details in chapter 2. And so when we go, well, he made Adam and he made Eve, and then, and then he had sons. We know about the sons. And then all of a sudden we pop up with a whole bunch of daughters. Where do, where do women come from? Where, uh, we didn't read about them. Well, number one, the Bible does not give uh, the female version of lineage. It only gives the male ver version of lineage. So you wouldn't hear about it. But we do know that it happened. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 5. Verses 1 and 2. And I want to show you where the women come in. It was God's will. There's, listen, Moses wrote the Bible, so he knew women had to come somewhere. So Moses wasn't silly. I'm like, ooh, I forgot to put women in in the beginning. I don't know what happened. I'm just going to kind of skip over it. Moses knew exactly what he was writing. So it, to him, it wasn't confusing. Genesis chapter 5, it says, this is the book of the generations of what? Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Verse 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. What was Adam's? What was Eve's name when she was made? Adam. They were one. Eve didn't come around until they fell. That was her second name. First name was Adam. Second name was Eve. That was a fallen name. Watch this. And he called their name Adam in the day that they were created. Verse three. 
And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness and after his image and called his name Seth. Verse 4. And the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were 800 years and he begat what? Adam begat what? So you, you got to think, well, well, wait a minute now. So um, he was about 800 years old, and he's, his wife is having daughters. But remember, back in those days, they lived for hundreds of years. So one daughter may be 100, another son may be 300, and they get together, have other children. And we go, man, well, that's not really incest. Incest is when you have it in the same generation, where you're in the actual same family within a generation. Then you have deformities, mutations, and all that. But not in the beginning. He said, be fruitful. And how is they going to grow? He had to allow it at some time. Hello, somebody. So mutations couldn't even affect him. So one daughter marries a man that's 300 years old. How many, how many people can you have in your family over 200 years? How many could be grown out of your family, one, one, two parents, over 200 years? That's a lot of kids. Now imagine you have two of those that live in for 800 years. You got you a handful. And then out of those two, uh, those kids get with the two that came out of these two over the other 800 years, and you multiply, 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 and then they're replenishing the earth. Do you understand? It's not as odd as people think it is. It is exactly God's plan. Now, it was his will that he did this. We have ten fingers, ten toes. Uh, each person was made according to the images. So if he did that for humanity, what about animals? We talk about which came first, the chicken or the egg. So, so let's go ahead and make sure we all know where we came from. Um, so which came first, chicken or egg? How many say the chicken came first? All right, look around. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Be proud and loud. Amen. Okay, how many think the egg came first? Put your hands up. Nice, loud, and proud. All right. No, he had one man, one man, braved it all. His wife moved away from him as soon as he <laughs> lifted his hands. She just fell over laughing. That's confidence. <laughs> his wife was like, Whoa! He was like, oh, God, I just, just. All right, we got one man with one egg, and we got the rest. How many don't know which came first, chicken or the egg? Okay, praise the Lord. All right, so let's, let's remember uh, which came first, uh, the chicken or the egg. Let me just go ahead and answer. Uh, it was the chicken. Hello, somebody, because God made everything created in its image, just like he made, made man, not as a baby, but as a whole man. And then they met with a, made a woman as a whole woman. And then they had a baby as an offspring. So was it was with the animals. He made the animals. Chicken came first. Then the eggs came after, after their purpose. Everyone produced after their own kind. The same way with the trees and everything else. But it's very important. Where did the image of the animals come from? Was it a new creation where they hit the earth or was it not? Let me show you. Let's go in the world and, and let's look at some things. Heaven was home to spiritual creatures. Listen, write this down. Heaven was home to spiritual creatures long before man was created from the dust of the earth. Heaven was home, heaven of heavens, where God's throne is, was there long before animals on earth or humans on earth were created from the dust. In fact, a pattern is set in heaven always. Write that down. Heaven starts every pattern. Write that down. Heaven starts every pattern. Nothing is made on earth unless there's a pattern of it from heaven first. Nothing is made on earth unless there's a pattern for it in heaven first. Even when we look in the Old Testament, the temple is a pattern of the temple that's in heaven. The high priests are a pattern after the order of Melchizedek which was a high priest unto God without beginning of days nor ending of days. Even the role of the high priest was there. When we read in Zechariah about the anointing of Joshua uh, before God, he was put a miter on his head. He was the first bishopric that we read out of the text of Scripture. He was had a miter on his head and a robe according to the Scriptures. It was in heaven first. So before we get all goofed out about what we do here in the natural, it, it, we've got to first ask the question, was it patterned in the supernatural first? Hello, somebody. 
So we can't, get, we can't let that become strange to us. Now, uh, heaven and all of its patterns were created. Now, let's see if animals were created at the time of man, but the pattern was in heaven. Where did the pattern come from? I want you to turn to Ezekiel chapter 10, verses, uh, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. We're talking about the pattern of animals was, was in heaven first. If you need to do a title for this, the, the pattern of animals were in heaven first. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. I want to give you the, the, the background. Ezekiel the prophet was being taken captive, heading along with captives on the way to Babylon for, uh, as, 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 as a spoils of war. Uh, this man was a priest, and he was a priest under God, walking in the chain gang on the way to Babylon under the, the rule of Nebuchadnezzar. While he was walking by the river Shabar, something happened to him that opened up his spiritual eyes. I want us to look at this. Uh, he began to hear uh, and see something occur over him, and this is what he saw. I want us to read together. Let's read verse 10. Go. What do we know this to be? A cherubim. Not the little fat baby with the fat wings. No. This is an enormous creature called a cherubim. Had four faces. One side, the face of a man. One side, the face of a lion. One side, the face of an a ox. And then they had the face of an eagle. One, four faces, and they moved, and they never turned because they could look in every direction. This creature was one of those creatures that we talked about who also was a cherubim. How many believes that? How many, how many believe Satan was a cherubim? Raise your hand. How many believe he was an angel? Raise your hand. How many don't know? Raise your hand. How many are scared to answer now that I've called somebody out? <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. <clears throat> All right. Lucifer, according to Ezekiel chapter 14 and Isaiah chapter 12 and Ezekiel chapter 28, was a cherub. He was this creature. He fell. He was this creature. He was a creature that was in charge of the presence of God. Whoever the presence of God went, he went. That was him. That's what we read about uh, when you look into the text of Scripture. He was a cherubim, not an angel. An angel looks like you and me. Angels look like us, uh, but they're only male, male angels. And so as a result of that, this now, now I want you to take a step back and notice the faces. Verse 11, let's take a look at something, then we'll go in to talk about it. Verse 11. Everyone read. Everybody say wings. Okay. Okay. So, we have a pattern of the eternal creatures created in heaven before man was created, one of which was the cherubim. And, what, and before animals were ever made on earth, what was the faces that we saw on these angels? Eagle, ox, lion, and man. So the pattern for the lion you see on television and the ox that you see on the Nature Channel, the eagle we have on the back of our quarters was actually part of a face of an angel long before we were even here. You've been given a glimpse of glory. Hello, somebody. Animals were created in heaven long before they hit the planet. And the pattern was already in a heavenly place before it came into our physical place. So again, God wills it because he saw the pattern in heaven. We're going to even get a little further. Uh, let's talk about, uh, let's talk in terms of plants. I can give you another example of animals that are in heaven. Uh, uh, how many uh, horses are in heaven? Horses are in heaven. How do you know that? Well, when Elisha the prophet was surrounded by the enemy, 
And he said to his servant, he said, there'll be more with us than there'll be with them. And he opened the eyes of his servant. They opened up and saw chariots of fire all around the mountain, horses of fire everywhere. Horses are spiritual creatures in heaven first before we hit him here on earth. Hello, somebody. So the idea is that everything patterned on earth is patterned at the spiritual things. You are, the animals are, the horses are, the eagles are, the lion is, the ox is. So what about the rest of creation? Let, write this down. Plants are patterned after things in heaven. Plants are patterned after things in heaven. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. Let's do, no, let's do 7, 8, 9, and we'll start there. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Is that right? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Okay. And the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. He became a living soul. Next part. And the Lord God did what? He planted what? Eastward where? And there he put man whom he had formed. Very important to understand. This is the only time something was planted in the earth. Up until this moment, he caused to grow out of the earth the trees. This is the only time God planted something in the earth. When you plant something, it comes from a source first. So let's take a look at what he planted. Next verse. And out of the ground, the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. And the tree of what? Also in the midst of the garden. And what else? Okay. Two trees he planted in that garden. Tree of life. Tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, where did the pattern come from of trees? Where did the concept of trees come from? Plant life come from? I want you to go to Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. We're going to find that even plants are patterned after heaven. So this is, why is this important for you to know as a believer? It's because if the pattern is made in heaven, then the fix is also coming from heaven. Hello, somebody. If somebody breaks the pattern, only God can fix it. Hello, somebody. Thank God the earth ain't all gone. Thank God trees can be restored. Thank God animals can be restored. Thank God humans can be restored. Why? Because the pattern can never be broken. It didn't come here. It stayed there. We are the byproduct of the pattern, but the pattern will never go away because it's in heaven and it's eternal. And thank God he knows what he's doing. Hello, somebody. Revelation 22, verse 1. We're almost done here. And he showed me a pure, where does the water come from? Heaven. Heaven. He showed me a pure what? River. A water of life. See, everything you see is watered down. Everything. What we're looking at, even the sun, the moon, and the stars, even the lights, even the plants, it's got nothing on the original pattern. You want to know what water is really, in, in, in natural terms, without water, you can't survive. Yes? And in heaven, it's not just water you need to survive off of. It is the river of life. It is life itself. The river that flows through the temple, the river that flows, has, gives life to the tree of life, is life itself. The water you drink, this water we drink is good, but not good enough. Hello, somebody. I got a thirst for water that man can't make. Hello. Spring water ain't spring water until it comes from that spring. Hello, somebody. Still need it, though. Hello, somebody. It is clear as crystal, not muddy, proceeding out of the throne of God and from the Lamb. 
Where is the water coming from? Where? See, y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Where is the water coming from? Throne of God and? Come on now. That's coming from him. You can't have life without him. Come on now. He's sitting on the throne and water just comes off the man. That brother brings rivers of living water. He told you out of your belly shall flow this stuff. Come on now. Woo. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Living, come on. When he said it, he meant it. It comes from his throne, his authority, who he, oh. You wonder why we can speak in tongues, heal the sick, open the blind eye, because there is a river of life that flows, and when our bellies are full of the river, we can give life to somebody else. He didn't mix his words up. He didn't misunderstand what he said. He said, out of your belly will flow rivers of, come on, when you look in Revelation, that ain't just talking off the cuff. There is a river of living, come on now. See, when we talk spiritual things, it boggles our mind because we just take things so lightly. You don't know when you're walking in the power, it's coming from a river of life. Whew. Watch this. Proceeding forth out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Verse 20. Thank you. Look at this. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river, read. Which So, so that tree of life has an apple on it. No. It has 12 fruit on it. And we don't know what they look like. And they bear fruit every month. And the leaves of that fruit is for our healing. Even today. We call people who, what are they, what's the word? When you're a person that love, love, don't go through a doctor, you like to do... Lipstick. Oh. Holistic. You just keep put a, put a Y on it. Just say holy. Because even then, before you became holistic, the, the leaves were used for the healing of the nation. Come on, somebody. And even today, the leaves of trees are being used to heal people's body. The whole pharmaceutical world is made up of leaves broken down based on the pattern came from heaven. Come on. God knows what he's doing. Hello. He is brilliant, smart. He is unspeakable when you talk about what he has done. And everything, if this is the weak stuff, with all of its side effects, I ain't never seen TV shows that we really, you like, and now this drug, Bimbalta, you can take. It'll help you sleep all night long. Side effects include death, eyes burnt out, teeth falling out. Children popping out you didn't know you had, and you're a male. I mean, it's like, what the? And we take it anyway. <laughs> I mean, if I walked up to somebody and said, hey, I'm about to give you something that's going to cause your eyes to burn out, you want it? No! They put it right on the screen and tell you, yeah, I want that. You need Jesus for the healing of the nations. Hello. It comes... <laughs> You better call on Jesus because them side effects, I'm like, did everybody just hear what he just said? <laughs> Woo! I love it. Minerals. Minerals, rocks, minerals. Where do they come from? Powdered in heaven. Go to Revelation 21, verse 10. It's about time to close out. Revelations 20, 10 and 11. Minerals from which we date all things. Minerals are how we date humanity. It's a whole other topic. Minerals is what we use to make things. Let's all read verse 10. Then carry me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. 
Where did he take you? A mountain. What's a mountain made of? Rocks and minerals, y'all. Every mineral that you've seen, every mountain you've seen is just a pattern after what's already in heaven. And he showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, the sitting out of heaven from God. Verse 11. Having the what? Glory of God. Those mountains carry the glory of God. We love pictures of mountains. But you ain't seen the mountains of God yet. And her light was like unto the stone most precious. Watch this. The jasper stone. Clear as crystal. Verse 12, our jasper stones aren't like that. And had a great wall and high and had 12 gates. And the 12 gates, 12 angels, and the names written thereon were the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Verse 13. And it talks about more gates. 14. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them were written the name of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Uh, Go down to verse 18. And the building of the wall... Of it was a jasper, again, a mineral. And the city was what? But like unto, you ever seen that? I have. God gave me a vision of heaven one time, and I saw a throne made of clear glass. It is unlike anything. If the best way you can describe it, have you ever seen a bubble? You know, a bubble is translucent, right? Color it gold. Thin like that, but stronger than anything you've ever seen. That's what the throne looked like. Gold that you could see through. Precious gold. Oh, it says it, like unto clear glass. (laughs) Exactly. It's like translucent. Verse 19. And the foundation of the wall were garnished with all manner of precious stones. First foundation was jasper. Second layer, sapphire. Third, chalcedony. Fourth, emerald. Fifth, sardonyx. Sixth, sardius. Seventh, chrysolite. Eighth, beryl. Ninth, topaz. Tenth, chrysophysis. Eleventh, jacinth. Twelfth, amethyst. I made it. I made it through. Amen. I made it. Hallelujah. Didn't mess up once. Woo! That's a gift from God right there. Woo! Rivers of living water. Okay. Uh, verse 21. <laughs> And the 12 gates were 12 pearls. Every silver gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you to understand something. As we build on concept upon concept, that the will of the Father makes everything, everything, first in heaven. Then it's pattern on earth. Long before man was made, all of this was already there. The trees, even down to the light as we know it. I want to, man, I, two verses and can we be done? Yeah. All right, last one. What is light pattern after? Let me, let me go to uh, Revelation 21, 23. Two verses and then we're done. 21, 23. This is what it's like in heaven. And the city had no need of the Neither of the, to what? Remember in Genesis for earth, he had to have two great lights. One to rule the day, one to rule the night. Because we're in the natural. In the natural, the sun reflects off the moon and gives us moonlight. The sun is made up of gases and balls of gases and and, and, and it's burning day in and day out. And that radiational gas is what we use to see from. But heaven ain't made up of, of, of uh, matter. It's not made up of natural things. It's made up of spiritual things. It doesn't need something to burn. It burns all by itself. Hello, somebody. It doesn't need a sun. Why? Watch this. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. You don't need a sun. You don't need a moon. Jesus is all you need. Man. In heaven, there, that's why they say in heaven there is no shadows 
because shadows are made when you can't see around a thing. Hello, somebody. I can, I can make a shadow if I just make something solid and then you can't see around it. I create a shadow. But the light of the Lamb doesn't see just around you. It sees through you, and his light shines through you. Therefore, in heaven, there is no sh No shadows in heaven because the Son of Man, Son of God, lightens it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Verse 24, and that's it. And the nations of them which are saved, shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor to it. The river of life, the light. All light that you see today is patterned after the original, the light of the Lamb. Everything. So when he made the earth, y'all, don't give it over to another thing. It all came from him. That's why he was the one who made the heaven and the earth. Because he knows its pattern. It's him. For by him all things consist. And nothing that was made was made except he made it. He is those things. Let's give God a great hand clap of praise for tonight. <laughs>